What is up everybody? My name is Nick and welcome to Digital Manufacturing and Design. Today we're going to take a look at SOLIDWORKS 2020. I'm going to show you how to change your interface options so you can get ready to draw a part, an assembly, and a print with inside SOLIDWORKS. So I've already got a SOLIDWORKS session running here in 2020 and the first thing that I like to do is I like to go up here in the top left hand corner where it says SOLIDWORKS. If I hover my mouse over there I can see file, view, tools, and then there's a little thumbtack. I'm going to click on that thumbtack and I'm going to lock that in place or pin it in place so I can see my file, my view, and my tools. And I can also see a new and open, and there's a little icon with a gear, and that's pretty important because that's gonna be our options. I'm gonna click on that options, and it's gonna open up a window that's gonna say System Options General. This is our back end interface of SOLIDWORKS, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in back here that we can uh, customize and change as we see fit, but I'm looking for a tab that says Document Properties, and we're not gonna see that Document Properties tab until we open up a part, an assembly, or a print inside of SOLIDWORKS. So I'm actually going to advise against making any changes back here until we open up one of those file types. I'm gonna close down this window, and I'm gonna to go to File, New, and it's gonna open up another window that says New Document, or New SOLIDWORKS Document, and it's gonna have the three types of SOLIDWORKS files that we can create. So we have a part, an assembly, and a drawing. So I like to look at this as the SOLIDWORKS workflow. So you can see that you're going to be starting out here in the part and then you're going to take that part and bring it into an assembly where it's going to interact with multiple components and then from there you're going to bring it into a drawing and in that drawing you can make a drawing from assembly or you can make a drawing from a part but nine times out of ten you're checking that part against other components to see if they work together so it's going to be in that assembly before it goes into the drawing. That one time out of ten you're going to just take that part and drive it right into the drawing and that's totally fine too but today we're just going to be working, uh, worried about the part level. So I'm going to click on part. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to open up, hopefully here, it's going to open up this beautiful interface. And we're going to be welcomed by a bunch of icons and symbols that's going to be completely overwhelming for a brand new SOLIDWORKS user. So I'm going to say let's stick with what we know. And let's go to that gear because that's what we were looking at before. We're going to open up that options. And we're going to see that system options general. And again, it's the same stuff that we were looking at. Uh, earlier, but now we have that Documents Property tab. And inside that Documents Property tab, I can start associating some things that are going to be locked to this print and locked to other print or locked to this drawing and other drawings that we do in the future. So I'm going to look at this drafting standards. And here in the United States, we're going to look at ANSI. If you guys are working in international standards, you're going to be ISO. Uh, but again, I'm here in the United States. I'm going to stay in ANSI. I'm going to go to Units. And again, United States gonna stay IPS, which is inch pound second. And I'm just gonna make sure that my drawings are gonna be matching our tolerances that we have out on the shop floor. So out on the shop floor, we're gonna be holding to probably around three decimal places. Anything more than that is gonna be a little bit more specialized, but for us, the basic is just gonna be three decimal places. So I'm just making sure and double checking that all of my decimal places are listed to three places. Go in there, dual dimension, see how this got uh, changed to millimeters. I'm gonna make that two inches. I'm gonna change that to three places, angle three places, and then this mass selection properties. This is gonna be more around that evaluate uh, command, and we're not gonna deal with that too much in this first video here, but I'm just gonna make sure that I have that at three places, so when I do go and use that command, I'll be able to know that it's uh, locked to those three, three decimal places like when I came back here and did this for the first time. I also wanna show you guys something here in the system options. And here, again, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can go and customize and change as we see fit. But I want to show you that if you're looking for something and you know what something is and you want to make that fine little tweak, you can go up here in the search options bar. I can type up here. And for example, if I was looking for hidden lines and I want to change some settings on my hidden lines, I can type in hidden lines. And it's going to come up with these search results. I can click on those search results and it's going to bring me directly to where it's listed inside of the system options tab. Uh, to edit and change my uh, hidden lines. So I'm not gonna make any changes just quite yet because I'm not really looking at that right now, but I'm just showing you that as an example. But to make sure that we save our settings for the IPS and the drafting standards, I'm gonna hit okay. And it's gonna save that to this file right now. Uh, now we're back into the SOLIDWORKS interface, and again, it's not no less inner or no less overwhelming than it was the first time we opened it. But I'm going to start breaking this stuff down so I can simplify it as best as possible for you. So first and foremost, I want to talk about the biggest area of this, and that's going to be the viewport or the graphics area. So I'm going to draw a box around this, and this is where all of your 2D and 3D operations are going to be taking place. So you're going to draw stuff in 2D, and then you're going to 
extrude it or revolve it, and it's going to come into a 3D space. You can start moving it around in that 3D space to take a look at that model, but that is going to be called the viewport or the graphics area. The next area that I want to take a look at is going to be over here, and that's going to be your feature manager or your design tree. I often call it my feature tree, but that's where everything is going to be listed in terms of a chronological order every time you do an operation here inside SOLIDWORKS. So you make a sketch, you make a drawing, it's going to log itself inside of that feature tree. You're going to make an extrusion or you're going to revolve something, it's going to log itself inside of that feature tree. And as you start creating more and more stuff inside that feature tree, again, it's that chronological timestamp or order that we're creating it in, you can start reordering that and putting it before or after itself. And I'll get into that a little bit um, more into uh, other videos, but I'm not going to focus on it too much right now. Clear that. If you guys are familiar with uh, Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, you're going to know that the top area of those softwares is going to be called a ribbon. So in that ribbon, you have a handful of operations that are going to be logged inside of certain tabs. Same thing inside of SOLIDWORKS. So inside of SOLIDWORKS, I have my features, my sketch, my markup, so on and so forth. And there's going to be a bunch of tabs that we're going to be eventually familiar with. But right now, we're really just going to focus on the features tab and the sketch tab. You're going to be going back and forth between these two a whole bunch because your sketch tab is going to be where you're going to be doing all that 2D sketching. And then when you finish with that 2D sketch, you're going to go into the features tab and start working on a 3D parametric modeling uh, interface. So you're going to start in the sketch tab, then you're going to go in the features tab, and you're going to keep bouncing back and forth until you finish your model. Now, when you guys open up SOLIDWORKS for the first time, there's probably going to be a bunch of tabs here that are going to be a little bit confusing as you're going through this. So I would highly advise right-clicking on any one of these tabs in the ribbon, and you can go to this tabs drop-down, and you can turn on or off uh, certain tabs as you see fit. So for example, I think surfaces and sheet metal comes in default, and we're not really going to be working in that. Uh, in these like introductory videos. So I'm gonna click on that sheet metal or surface tab and I'm gonna right click it, go to tabs, and I'm just gonna turn those bad boys off. So surfaces off and sheet metal off, and that just cleans it up a little bit because I don't wanna be clicking on some random tab and like, where am I? What am I gonna be doing? I just wanna make sure that I'm working in those features in the sketch tab. Uh, when you flip back and forth between those tabs, you're gonna notice that there's a handful of different functions and features that are listed inside of each one of those tabs. And that whole area there, that's gonna be called your command manager. And in that command manager, I'm trying to find my square here to block this out, but in your command manager here, there's going to be nine times out of 10, the functions and the features that you're gonna be using when you're drawing your model or modeling your part. So you can add into those command managers and add into those tabs. Um, like for me, I work with threads a whole bunch and the threads aren't listed in that feature uh, tab. So I can right click, I'm gonna show you how to do that right here. Clear this drawing. You can right click here and then you can go to customize and then you can go into customize, go to commands and you can look, look for certain commands. Like for me, like I said, I'm looking for threads. I can go to features and I can find the thread command which is right there, and I can drag that into that uh, command manager, or I can drag something out if I don't need it. So I can right click it and I can delete it. So I'm not gonna change that up too much, but I wanna show you that it is available to us. And you could see when I had that open, I had all the available tabs or available um, yeah, tabs within a ribbon that you can either turn on or toggle off. All right. so. Now we're kind of starting to understand where things are located inside of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, I want to show you something to make this a little bit clearer because everything seems to be the same color when you open up the SOLIDWORKS. So a lot of people want to try to change their background to kind of differentiate between the viewport, the feature tree, and then the command manager and the ribbon up here. So what I try to advise people to do right away is you can go to right click in the viewport and you can go to edit scene. And you can access this edit scene in a handful of different ways. It's just gonna be this little beach ball dancing on the checkered uh, dance floor here. But I'm gonna click on this edit scene. It's also available here. Uh, just turned off because we're, we're working inside of it now, but I'm gonna move this picture. And you're gonna be prompted with this appearances, scenes, and decal. Uh, decal's over here in the task plane, which is gonna be on this right side. It can be either expanded or closed. But 
Um, I'm looking inside of these scenes, and I'm gonna look for something called the Black Backdrop Studio Room 2. And that's what I use for the most part because it's a really great way to show that the viewport is a different color than the feature tree, than the uh, command manager, and the ribbon. So I can double click on this or I can drag it out into the viewport and it's gonna change my color. I'm gonna hit the green check mark. And you're gonna see now that I have a very distinct colored viewport and that's where I know that I'm gonna be drawing or working on a part. So now that we've essentially set up SOLIDWORKS in a way that maybe every time I wanna start a new part, this is exactly how I wanna see it. And I don't wanna go back into the options and change what I need to change inside of my document properties and my units and my drafting, but I wanna create something like a template. So every time that I open up SOLIDWORKS, I can go to File New, and it's gonna open up this snapshot that we just created with all these changes. So I'm gonna to go to File, Save As, and when I go to the file, save as, I'm gonna change this from SOLIDWORKS part to, and I'm gonna hit this drop down menu, I'm gonna make it part templates. So this part templates is now gonna put you in the correct folder within SOLIDWORKS, within the back end of your operating system to start logging parts or assemblies or drawing templates that you can open up on a fly. So here we are, I'm gonna title this new, Nick part, and I'm gonna hit save. And it's gonna take a second to save here, but <clears throat> I don't wanna start drawing just quite yet because if I start drawing and I save that template, that drawing or that sketch or that extrusion is gonna be logged inside of that template every time I open it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this down so I don't make any changes. I'm gonna to go to File, New. And when I do that File New, I'm gonna be prompted with that window again to choose whether I'm gonna be working in a part, an assembly or a drawing. But hey, I'm looking for that template that I just created. Where can I find it? Well. I can hit this little advanced uh, button down here in the bottom left hand corner of this window. I hit advanced and you're gonna notice that I can still access my part assembly in my drawing, but I can see that I have a new part template that I can access. And for me, it was called the new Nick part. I can click on that and just like I did before, I can hit okay. And it's going to open up that template that I just finished creating. So. All those changes that I made in the drafting, into the units, if I made any changes in the system operations or the system options, it's gonna save that stuff. It's gonna save, save all of those tabs that I turned off and it's gonna save that background that I just added to it. So this is a really great way to start off your SOLIDWORKS experience and maybe not get too overwhelmed with starting to draw just quite yet. We're gonna start off with a good foot, good template, and then go from there.